Does anyone else remember when Elon Musk had to help rescue those astronauts? It was all over the news. The splashdown, the headlines, Elon saves the day. And while the world was celebrating, I was sitting there thinking, but what if they had died up there? Like seriously, am I the only morbid one? I mean, I'm glad they made it back. Don't get me wrong. But the second I heard rescue, my funeral director brain went into overdrive because nobody was talking about the obvious question. What happens if someone dies in space? And I couldn't stop thinking about it. I've embalmed a lot of people. I've zipped them into body bags. I've prepped them for burial, cremation, even composting, but I've never handled a case from the vacuum of space. So naturally I spiraled. Does your body explode? Does it freeze? Does it smell? Would your crew even keep you? Or would they just yeet you like space trash and move on? So buckle up coffin crew, because today we're going where no mortician has gone before. Are you ready for my theme song? Da 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 morbid Monday <laughs> morbid Monday here we go da 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 okay that's all I got anyways cue the intro <laughs> are my glasses really that funny looking I don't know let's fix that shit I love my job <laughs> Let's back it up for a second. Beep, beep, beep. You've left the safety of your spaceship. You're untethered. You're just floating alone in the vacuum of space. No air, no pressure, just silence. And within 15 seconds, you lose consciousness. That's it. Game over. You don't gasp. You don't scream. You don't even get to say something dramatic like, tell my story. Don't let them forget me. Your lungs collapse. The moisture in your mouth and eyes starts to boil. Your skin's swells. Your blood pressure plummets. You blow up like a haunted balloon animal, but no, you don't explode. You just hang out there, frozen, bloated, preserved by the void. Sounds kind of magical. And here's the kicker. Without oxygen, there's no bacteria, no bugs, no rot, no decomposition. You don't return to dust. You just stay exactly like that, suspended, eternal, floating corpse, drifting through space like some kind of cosmic taxidermy project. I'm used to embalming bodies with formaldehyde and arterial injection, but out here, space does it for you. It's the ultimate natural preservative. Zero stars on Yelp, though. Would not not recommend. Don't tell your friends. Anyways, now let's say you were wearing a suit, a space suit. Congratulations, you didn't explode, but you're still very, very, very dead. A pressurized suit protects you for a little while, but your body is still vulnerable to cosmic radiation, extreme temperature swings, and freeze thaw cycles. So over time, you'll slowly dry out, slowly mummify, and slowly rot in a $12 million thermos world's most expensive embalming. It's out of this world. Okay, I'm terrible. Okay. In my world, little funeral land, we embalm with formaldehyde, but in space, you get preserved by frostbite and radiation. Again, zero stars would not recommend. Okay, but Lauren, like, what if I die inside of the spaceship? The ISS has a morgue or something, right? You'd think so, but no, there's no cold chamber, no drawer for the deceased, no space funeral home module. Can you believe that? I can. If you die inside the spacecraft, your body still decomposes though. Just like on Earth, you bloat, you purge, fluids leak, gases build. But here's the thing, on Earth, gravity helps keep all that mess downward. In space, everything floats. Blood, bile, intestinal gas. It doesn't pool in your abdomen or drip onto a table. It suspends, it swirls. You don't just smell the decomposition, you see it. Microscopic death particles wafting gently through the cabin air like little ghost confetti. If that bag, the body bag, I'm from the Midwest, we say bag. If that body bag ain't sealed tight, your crewmates could be brushing their teeth next to a floating glob of pancreas juice. Yummy. It's like being haunted by your own co-worker's colon. I just said that with a straight face. Anyways. So NASA's backup plan, a prototype called body back. Basically a body bag cocoon. They seal the body, stash it in a cold storage module and hope it stays contained. So no, there's no drawer labeled deceased, just a corpse, a bag, and maybe a spare closet next to the astronaut ice cream. I know what you're thinking. We've got a dead guy zipped up in some high tech NASA bag. So would a dead body even smell in space? Yes, immediately yes. 
gas and it would reek. Inside the ship, there's oxygen, warmth, and pressure. That means decomposition will begin. Bacteria activates. Gases like sulfur, ammonia, and methane build up. And in microgravity, those gases don't rise or dissipate. They just linger, float, swirl around you like a haunted death cloud. Even if the body's sealed in a bag, even their little top secret NASA body bags, so special, unless it's totally airtight and filtered, some of those particles are going to escape, even if it's a fancy NASA body bag. Think haunted Tupperware with a cracked lid. And if it's not bad enough sharing a toothbrush drawer with decomposition gas, just imagine Laika's ghost silently judging you from the corner. She's been up there since 1957. She's definitely seen some things. Do you remember Laika? The biggest disappointment ever when some asshole decided to send her up in a spaceship, first dog casualty in space. I think I touch on that later. We'll get there. Don't worry. So now that we've got a corpse on a spaceship, what do we do with it? Has anyone ever actually had a funeral in space? In space. The short answer, no. No astronaut has ever died in space. Not during a mission, not in orbit, not on the moon. All human deaths related to space travel so far have happened either during launch, re-entry, or training. The Challenger disaster. Soyuz 11, Apollo 1, all tragic. But they died either in Earth's atmosphere or before they ever left the pad. But there has been one death in space and it wasn't human. Her name was Laika, a little stray dog from Moscow, launched in 1957 aboard Sputnik 2, the first living creature to ever orbit Earth. But there was no plan to bring her back home, just a sealed capsule and a one-way ticket. Who thought that was a good idea? Seriously, they called it this like big achievement milestone. I call it what it was, space exploration at the expense of someone who couldn't say no. So no humans have died in space yet. But Laika, she was the first body to orbit this planet and she deserved better. So no, no official funerals in space, no folded flags, no space priest, no memorial service in zero gravity. NASA and other agencies have talked about what might happen if someone dies in orbit, especially on missions to Mars, but they've never had to carry it out yet. NASA, are you hiring funeral directors? Just kidding. I choose life. <laughs> Can you cremate a body in space? That's another hard no. Cremation requires fire, and fire is one of the most dangerous things you can introduce to a spacecraft in microgravity. In microgravity, flames burn in weird little spheres. They float, they spread fast. Even a tiny flame can be a death sentence. NASA doesn't even allow birthday candles on board the ISS. You really think they're gonna light up Steve from accounting? <laughs> Yay, Steve. Steve references again. Also, there's no crematory on board. You You'd need a chamber that hits 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, safely contains smoke, and keeps the ashes from floating into someone's protein shake. It's not happening. So if you want your ashes in space, the only real option is die on Earth first, then get cremated on Earth again, and pay a company like Celestis to launch your ashes into orbit. Some let you circle Earth, burn up like a shooting star, or go to the moon or deep space. There are ashes of real people and yes, sci-fi icons already up there. One even had to be smuggled aboard. But full-blown cremation in orbit? Literal fire hazard. Not today, Satan. So yeah, no Viking space pyres yet. No ashes to ashes in the vacuum of space. Just a Ziploc bag and silence. I want to be clear right now. I'm calling it. It will happen one day. It's going to happen. Someone, maybe an astronaut, maybe a tourist, maybe Katy Perry. Ah, just kidding. We all know Katy Perry never went to space. Maybe a future Mars colonist is going to die in space. And for the first time ever, we'll have to figure out how to grieve without gravity. We've spent billions figuring out how to survive space, but very little on what to do when someone doesn't. We don't have cosmic cemeteries, no universal protocol, no microgravity funeral rites, just a lot of questions. And emotionally, we're not ready. Grief doesn't disappear in orbit. It probably gets worse. No family, no funeral home, no closure, just a bag floating next to the freeze-dried lasagna. And that's why I made this video, because space exploration isn't just about rockets and robots. It's about people. And people die. And when they do, someone's
someone's going to have to look around that spaceship and say, it's okay, I've got them now. I hope that person has a really good body bag and maybe a little training from someone like me. So if you liked this cosmic corpse content rant slash educational video, hit like, drop a comment, and subscribe for more science, death, and stories from beyond the prep room. I do new videos every morbid Monday and sometimes Thursdays or Saturdays or whatever I'm in the mood for. I'm Lauren the Mortician, and that's how we put fun in funeral science. You need a mango kiss, and also if you're new here every Monday, you get mango kisses before you leave to get your week rolling. They need a kiss. Oh. Oh. Oh, okay. Is that it?